Hi everyone, my name is Abby, for those of you who don't know me, and I am so excited to be reading yet another book for Storytellers Club. Now, the book I picked out today is very special for the month of February, and that is because February is Black History Month. So Black History Month is a time that we should take to recognize all the people in our own lives and all the people through history who are people of color that have changed the world for good and have just made the world a better place. Now, the book I've picked out takes a dive into the lives of the Harlem Globetrotters, who are a black basketball team started in the 1950s. And it just talks about their story and their lives and how they changed the National Basketball Association. And so let's just dive right in. This is Swish. Here we go. It all started with those boys. Thump, thump and basketballs up and down Chicago's south side in alleys, driveways, and parking lots. Raw talent and determination in worn off sneakers. Practicing nonstop layups, all net free throws, and sky high jump shots. When their team charged into Wendell Phillips High wearing those official school jerseys, every student grew an inch taller with pride. Their players were unstoppable division champs. Everyone could see they had as much talent as the country's best hoopsters, but the top teams only recruited white players. So after graduation, those Wendell Phillips stars joined traveling teams for black players. Before long, a few players met a small man with a big dream, Abe Saperstein, who helped them form their own team, the Harlem Globetrotters. The name sounded grand, like they'd played all over the world. Well, not quite, but they barnstormed their way across America, Little Abe and five giant players. Toots Wright, Kid Oliver, Fat Long, Runt Pullins, and Andy Washington. They squeezed into an old Model T and chugged from town to town, searching for anyone who would play. Farmers, students, lumberjacks, and people who would pay to watch. Seven nights a week, the road-weary team played ball, healthy, sick, or injured, and won nearly every game. But hometown fans didn't like out-of-time hot shots sunking their team. Soon, the Trotters came up with a plan. Smack in the middle of the game, each player performed a ball-handling trick while the others took a short rest. Crowds howled with delight at the surprising sights. One finger spinning, rapid fire mini dribbling, and a ricochet headshot. Suddenly, people didn't mind when the hilarious Trotters beat their team. The Globe Trotters played wherever they could. Barns, basements, even the bottom of a dried up swimming pool. The crowds laughed and cheered. But as soon as the game ended, the cheers stopped. The tired, hungry players weren't always welcomed in hotels and restaurants. They couldn't use most gas station restrooms or phones. Nearly every drinking fountain wore a whites only sign. Downhearted yet determined, a new fire fueled their game. The Trotters would prove that all players, all people, deserve to be treated the same. With their fancy footwork, fast passes, and one-handed dunk shots, they played the most breathtaking, groundbreaking ball the country had ever seen. Years bounced by. Older players retired. New ones stepped in. Goose Tatum, the clown prince, who rolled that ball across 84 inches of steel strong arms. Marquise Haynes, a dazzling dizzying dribbler with the lightning fast hands. Boyd Bowie, a spectacular sharpshooter who had only one arm. With their slapstick tricks and pinpoint shots, the Trotters game became known as the show. They made the games look so easy. People didn't even notice their incredible talent. But this team was more than a show. They were skilled athletes, expert players, and electrifying performers, all rolled into one, professionals at the game. But the professional basketball teams didn't allow black players. Determined to make people see their talent instead of their skin color, the Globetrotters challenged the best team in the National Basketball League the mighty Minnesota Lakers. What? You could almost hear the nation gasp. A pro team play those high-flying showboats? How ridiculous. Yet, the Lakers agreed. They couldn't wait to trounce the Trotters. 
Shivering fans lined up outside Chicago Stadium in the middle of the night darkness on February 19, 1948. That's coming up in like two days. People across the country slapped down sure bets. Easy money. No way the Lakers could lose. They had six foot ten giant George Milken. Surrounded by a ruckus, record-breaking crowd, the Globetrotters jogged out in comical striped shorts, but they left their tricks behind. Tonight was straight up serious ball. Right from the start, Goose stuck to Milken like gum on a shoe. Yet Milken quickly scored 18 points and blocked every shot Goose put up. By halftime, the Lakers were ahead, but the Globetrotters fought back and tied the game. Right before the end of the game buzzer, the Trotters sent one last shot soaring towards the net. Swish! Globe Trotters win 61 to 59. Without saying a word, the Trotters showed the world that players with different skin colors belonged on the same court. The Lakers demanded a rematch. The win was a fluke. A year later, the teams faced off again, and the Trotters won again. Now, the most popular team in America. The Globetrotters played to sold out stadiums and signed a Hollywood movie contract. Meanwhile, NBA teams were barely selling enough tickets to pay the bills. Frustrated team owners gathered to pick the next season's recruits. One by one, they carefully considered each athlete's talent. And suddenly, their whites-only rule seemed ridiculous. Then, something incredible happened. What do you think is going to happen? The Celtics owner announced an astounding choice. Chuck Cooper, one of the most remarkable players he'd ever seen, and one of the Globetrotters' newest recruits. Soon, another owner declared his top picks, two more phenomenal black players. And the game was never the same. It became nonstop, give it all you got, out to win it, sky's the limit, basketball. After breaking into the NBA, the Globetrotters broke out into the world. They played in Dusty Bullring in Peru, in a cow pasture in New Zealand, and on a court built over barrels in Germany. The crowds were astonished by their slam dunks, alley-oops, and their other high-flying surprises. They made thousands of new friends, met popes, princes, and presidents, and even sipped tea with the Queen of England. They shared their joy, laughter, and warm friendship with nations around the world, even ones who weren't friends with the United States. Back home, the Harlem Globetrotters were named America's Ambassadors of Goodwill. How about that? The team that brought black and white America closer together brought the world a little closer together too, and lived up to their Globetrotter name after all. So the Harlem Globetrotters are a very important team as they literally changed the National Basketball Association for good. Now, they really show us that no matter how big the dream is or how unrealistic it may seem at the time, Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. So after reading this story, I want you to go and think about your own lives and think about a dream that you may have or something that you want to pursue and really think about how you can achieve it and put your mind to it. For me, I would love to be a professional actress. And so I am right now applying to colleges to pursue a degree in musical theater. And maybe I'll be on Broadway one day. We'll see what happens. But I want you to just think about dreams in your own lives and really take a moment and, you know, respect the basketball players like the Harlem Globetrotters that have put so much effort into achieving their dream and maybe even look at some other historical people of color and find out more about them. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you take the time and recognize the rest of February as Black History Month.